So now we are here to talk about the magnetic properties of iron and steel. Now, I know that we have um, just talked about magnetic materials in general, things that can become magnets or can be attracted by magnets. However, iron and steel have a slight difference and that difference is quite critical. Iron is easier to magnetize, but it loses its magnetism easily. And iron is called soft magnetic material. Very commonly, you can call iron soft iron even. Steel is actually an alloy of iron. It's harder to magnetize, but it does not lose its magnetism easily. And this is called hard magnetic material. Now let's do a, a bit of proof. Over here, we have two bars, one iron bar and one steel bar. A bar magnet is placed on top of these un previously unmagnetized bars. Now, this north pole obviously makes this side a south pole and this side a north pole. Therefore, it turns this one into a magnet. Also, this south pole turns this steel bar into a magnet. So both bars are now um, induced magnets. Now, this iron bar, you can see that there's a lot of iron filings attached to the iron bar. This shows that the iron can, the iron is easier to magnetize, which means this now is a stronger magnet if the bar magnet is on top. Now, for this steel bar, you can see that there's only a little bit. There's a little bit of iron filings on it only. This shows that the steel is harder to magnetize. The steel bar is harder to become an induced magnet. <clears throat> Therefore, if the bar magnet is on top here like this, the iron bar will be a stronger magnet and the steel bar will be a weaker magnet. So why don't we use iron bars for everything then? Why do we still need steel bars? Now let's take a look if the bar magnet is now removed. Now if the bar magnet is now removed, what happens here? You can look at the iron bar here. The iron bar well, are there any iron filings on the bottom? The answer is no. There are no iron bar. There are no iron filings on the bottom here because they have all dropped down. This is because the iron bar has lost all its magnetism in an instant. Okay, iron is easier to magnetize, which means it makes a stronger magnet. However, it loses its magnetism easily once the iron once the bar magnet is taken off this thing stops becoming a magnet. It stops becoming an induced magnet anymore. Let's compare it with the steel bar. Look, even after the bar magnet has been removed, the steel bar still seems to have iron filings attached to the bottom. This means the steel bar actually retained its magnetism. So even though the steel bar is a weaker magnet, it will remain a magnet even when the bar magnet is taken off. So this steel bar keeps being a magnet and therefore without the influence of a bar magnet, the steel bar is, is essentially the better choice because it retains its magnetism but the iron bar does not. Okay, so let's compare the magnetic properties of iron and steel. Iron is easily magnetized and steel is harder to magnetize. Iron does not retain its magnetism. However, steel retains its magnetism. Iron is called a soft magnetic material and steel is called a hard magnetic material. Iron is used in electromagnets and in course of a transformer. However, steel is used to make permanent magnets instead. Those are permanent magnets is the magnetic door catch. Um, this is the one that probably um, you will see in the staff room. Okay, also magnetic strips on refrigerator doors, which all of you will be able to see, and also compasses. Okay, this bar thing in the middle is actually a permanent magnet. <clears throat> Some other uses of permanent magnets is in loudspeakers. Okay, in a loudspeaker, this is a permanent magnet and it vibrates the coil of the loudspeaker. They are, they are also used in electric meters and electric motors. We will talk more about them later. Also, they are used in a moving coil and meter. In, in this question, three bars of metal are known to be brass, iron and steel. 
A magnet is placed at one end of each metal bar. Then the figure shows how many iron tags are picked up by each metal bar. What are metals 1, 2, and 3? I'll give you all 3 seconds to um, think about the question. Okay, the answer for this question is that metal 1 has the most iron tags, metal 2 has less, and metal 3 has none. So, because the bar magnet is still on top of this metal, um, this one should be the strongest induced magnet and therefore this metal one should be iron. This metal two um, does not have a very strong magnet over here because it has picked up less iron tacks. Um, however, it is still a magnet and therefore it should be steel because, it is, because steel is harder to magnetize. And metal three has picked up nothing because uh, metal tree is obviously not an induced magnet. It has not been used at all, which means it is a metal that is a non-magnetic material, which therefore metal tree should be brass. Now, the next thing is that these are called electromagnets, and it consists of a coil bonded on the core of a soft magnetic material, just like soft iron. When the circuit is closed and the current flows through the coil, the core becomes magnetized. Okay, the core is obviously soft iron, and because it's soft iron, when you open this switch again, the electricity will not flow, and therefore the soft iron will lose its magnetism very fast when the circuit is open. Now, the strength of the magnetism can be increased by three ways, and this is quite important and is commonly tested in exams. The strength can be increased by passing a larger current through the coil, increasing the number of turns of the coil, or inserting this core made out of soft magnetic materials. The core helps to concentrate the magnetic few lines produced by the coil. A solenoid is made by winding many turns of an insulated copper wire around a soft iron core, like an iron nail. The core becomes a magnet temporarily whenever a current starts or stops to flow in a solenoid. An alternating current supply also works to create um, a magnet. <coughs> So for example, when the switch is closed here, then the nail actually picks up iron filings. However, when the switch is open, all the iron filings fall off because the nail is demagnetized when the switch is open. Some uses of, <coughs> some uses of electromagnets are sorting scrap metal. This is when you send your car in to scrap, then they will, the electromagnets will find the metal parts, um, separate them from the other debris and lift them somewhere to be recycled. They also can be used to create audio and video tapes. They are also used in your credit, debit, and ATM cards. Therefore, never put your ATM card next to a very strong magnet because it would remove the tape over here. This thing over here is magnetic tape. <clears throat> also, your television and your computer monitor uses electromagnets, electric bells, and also circuit breakers. You should have these on the um, backs of your houses. So, let's finish up some key concepts. Iron is a soft magnetic material. It is easily magnetized and demagnetized. Steel is a harder magnetic material. It is harder to magnetize, making a weaker magnet. However, it retains its magnetism, which means when it retains its magnetism. So, let's do some misconception analysis. I'll give you about three seconds to complete this. Okay, now I'll show the answers. Okay, now I'll take a look. I'll give you three seconds to do this. You can pause if you like. Okay, now I'm going to show the answers. <clears throat> 